Hey everyone, it's Tom and Tammy. We know it's not Sunday. We're not confused about the day of the week. It's just that our day for tomorrow is gonna to be crazy busy. So we just decided about 10 minutes ago that, hey, maybe we should go live today instead. And that will make tomorrow so much easier for us. You know, we're really learning how to be flexible right now. So here's Tom. Hello everybody. I'm Tammy, I, this is Tom. I gotta get on the computer and make sure our sound and all of that is good, so, yeah, so welcome. Tom will be um, moderating and looking for comments, but he's also gonna participate in conversation. So if you're here, please say hi, tell us you're here, uh, let us know where you're from. That's always so much fun for us to see where the viewers live. And we've got uh, several things that we wanna talk about today, and one is, the winner of the giveaway for the Milthy 2.0 six quart pressure cooker. Well, actually it's a multi cooker because it does so many things, but we're gonna make that announcement and we're gonna talk about um, why we still eat brown rice and how we um, try to make the best choices regarding that. We're going to talk about why we use microwaves. These are questions that we've gotten recently. I think there was a yeah. question. I just saw yeah. a question on YouTube too. Yeah, Tiffany is here. Um, and so yes, Tiffany, if you would moderate and awesome. Thank be our you. troll hunter, that would be awesome. <laughs> and that makes my job go a lot smoother in terms of watching for questions. If you do have a question for Tammy, please remember to do the four question marks in front of and then behind the sentence so that I can find it easier. easier and bring it to her attention. Nice. So, um, so yeah, we have some folks piling in here. Okay, that's great. So I'll just turn down my volume, but I'm gonna have my phone on just so I can watch the chat. Oh, well that'd be, the, oh, so you don't need me to. Huh? Oh yeah, I do, but you, <laughs> I thought you told me to put my phone on while you're talking, I'll be able you to see You can take a this. look at what's going on. Yeah, yeah but we've funny. got our moderators that are helping out. We really appreciate that, that's so awesome. Hello, Nadege, so, Nadege is here. Oh, a lot of the regulars are here. Okay. Yeah, we didn't give much warning, but a lot of you maybe were just on your computer because like we just decided to do yeah, this. Yeah, we were working on things for tomorrow and we were trying to make stuff fit and it just was turning into a, a tower of cards that could so easily crumble. <laughs> so we, we thought we would take your card out of the pile of tomorrows and play it today and be That's safe right. with that. That's right, because so, we'd be a little more relaxed yeah. right now. It's been a really busy day. Yesterday was busy. Um, we've been filming some new YouTube recipe videos and we did what two yesterday and three today yeah 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 and we have one more we want to wrap up tomorrow so we're real yeah. excited um, so to I, share I need with you time to edit things. we will be releasing those yeah so. in the future <laughs> okay. but it's nice to have them done it takes a lot of time it's a lot of prep mm. and but when we do it we since we already have everything set up in the kitchen the cameras and the lights and yeah. everything we like to you know crank well, out several do we want to show what we gave away and who we gave it away to is that do you did, were you gonna do that when first yeah first? let's do it you want to okay. grab the yeah i'll just milky? show what we gave away yeah so um if i you're used new, it for lunch today i hope i cleaned it i hope you cleaned it good too he doesn't always clean it as good okay that should that be pretty so good. anyway yeah, uh, was it about a month ago? There, I think it's facing forward. Anna, is. Anna is our our um, manager, uh, our affiliate manager with Milthy Company, and so she emailed us and asked if we wanted to give away one of these guys, the new 2.0, and and we said of course. So many of you participated in that giveaway. Tammy put it on the blog, and you could register different ways. Um, to get um, a, draw, a ticket in the bin. So uh, we had um, a total. Oh, and that video is the one where we demonstrated how to make the California quinoa mango salad. That video is still up. The giveaway part I took out. Yeah. So if, if, you, if somebody's having like Twilight Zone, I deleted the part about the giveaway once the giveaway was over, if you go back to watch that video. Mm -hmm. um, there were 1,732 tickets in the bin because you could enter by logging in through Facebook or 
Instagram, Instagram uh, or going to the blog. Mm -hmm. So, and those 1,732 entries came from 736 unique uh, users, entrants. So we did the software, the automated software drawing um, day before yesterday. Mm -hmm. And congratulations to Jennifer from Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, won the pot. It will be getting shipped to her directly from Milty Corporation. And Jennifer, if you are watching, we have uh, notified Anna. And um, so we're waiting for a confirmation email back from her when that actually gets shipped out. Yeah, we're so, so excited. And I don't know if Jennifer knows or not, but Tom and I are both originally from Nebraska. And we have a lot of family there. So when we saw that the winner came from Nebraska, yeah, that so was... that town sounds familiar to me. <laughs> That was kind of exciting for us. And, you know, it's fun to know that there's plant-based eaters in Nebraska. So that was really fun. So congratulations and thanks to everyone who participated and put your um, name in the drawing. That It was really fun and we were just so excited that we could sponsor um, this and and help someone get a new yeah, milk. Yeah, so I'll put that clean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, multi-pot away. So that was super fun and exciting. So, and thank you to uh, Anna at Milthy for asking us if we wanted to participate because, you know, it's really fun to be able to give our subscribers a prize. So, so we'll have to yeah. see what, what we can get next for, from one of our, from, from one of our one companies, of our companies yeah. cause that's really fun. So, um, if, so if anybody has any questions about Milthy, we can answer those for you. Um, oh, and Bonnie says that she made the lentil loaf. So that's exciting. Did you tell them what to do if they have a question? We, yeah, we did talk about did that, that while, you, while you were- While I was reading. Yeah, I talked about the four question marks in okay, front of the Okay, perfect. Band. So Angela Lee has got her Holland Bowl ordered. I don't know that they're shipping yet. Um, I think they're still closed, but, um, but we're- Yeah, we haven't heard from Corey this um, past week. But for those of you who know or don't know, so Tom and I are affiliates with the Holland Wood Bowl Company out of Michigan, Holland, Michigan. And they have a spring promotion going for 10% off of your order right now. And they are extending it for the whole month of April. Originally, it was only going to be for like a, uh, about two weeks. But um, when they started the promotion, they didn't know that the governor was going to end up closing everything down, which of course needed to happen because of the uh, pandemic. And so they're not able to ship anything currently, but they are still taking orders. And as soon as they're allowed to go back and resume they work, will be busy. they yeah. will be busy shipping things out. So we have a blog post on the blog all about that. And if you go to our Facebook page, there is a, um, a post that's pinned to the top of the Nutmeg Notebook Facebook page that tells you about what they're doing and the 10% discount. We have a question from, um, I don't know how to pronounce this, uh, E I L E Aline? Aline. I'm going to call it, I'm going to call you Aline. Okay. Um, do you have recipes for Dylan's sauces? Um, I don't have recipes for Dylan's sauces, but I just use them a lot to flavor my bowls. Like, well, I did a- Your salad bowls, yeah. Or, or a hot bowl, oh, a sure. nourish bowl. So I did a stir fry one day last week where I had broccoli and um, I had carrots and um, sugar snap peas and onion and garlic. And I had something, what are those little cabbage, those little Chinese, those little cabbages. I can't think of the name of them. Well, anyway, um, so I had cabbage in it and I did a little stir fry and just water sauteed it. And then I added the Asian, Dylan's Asian sauce to it and it was absolutely mm. delicious. So if I'm making something that's kind of plain and we do a lot of bowls because I, and I was, one thing I was going to talk about was menu planning because someone wrote to me and said, you know, can you give me a menu plan for a week? And I actually don't menu plan. Uh, I just make a lot of ingredients on the weekends and then we take those ingredients and pull them together for meals. And 
what you know how I used to meal plan is before going plant-based is I would think about what protein I was going to have animal protein of course I was going to have and I would build my meal around that well now what I do instead is I pick out what starch am I going to have am I going to have a sweet potato or you know a Japanese sweet potato or a yam or a Hanna yam or am I going to have Yukon gold potatoes or oat groats or rice or millet or quinoa so I'll pick my starch and then I'll choose something to go with my starch so it might be pinto beans or black beans or garbanzo beans and then I'll pick a vegetable and and that could be anything you know it could be greens it could be carrots it, you know beets anything and I'll combine those in a bowl and then I'll either put vinegar some kind of vinegar over the top of them we love California balsamic uh, flavored vinegars I might drizzle vinegar over the top of it or one of Dylan's well your world uh, sauces I can make it to be Indian or Asian or I can do barbecue sauce or I can do one of his salad dressings you know I mean it can be anything so that's kind of how we use those and that's kind of how we do our meal Pre plan. Preform meal assembly uh, not so much a pre-planned instead of a pre-planned meal plan it's a free form meal assembly yeah so, so. we really make um, meal planning super easy because Tom eats the same breakfast every morning he has his oats with hemp seeds and chia seeds and a banana and blueberries in it and that is the breakfast that he has every morning and so that simplifies everything because we know exactly what we need every week for his breakfast and so and he just you know every week when we go shopping he checks his inventory and makes sure he has all the components that he needs to make his breakfast then we each eat a chopped salad a big beautiful chopped salad for one of our meals every day and so that simplifies things too because and then we you know we add different things to it it's not just vegetables we'll add beans and and um, rice corn yeah and it's some type salsa. of a grain or a potato to it so that we have starch but that simplifies things so right right there we've eliminated having to think about breakfast and I you know I try to eat breakfast sometimes I haven't been very good about it the last couple of of weeks because I'm not really hungry in the mornings so I don't really have to worry about it I keep my quinoa banana oat muffins made I can always grab one of those or have a bowl of leftover vegetables and throw some oat groats in it so so right there we've eliminated two meals out of the day we don't even have to think about what we're going to have and then it's just um, one meal a day for each of us that we have to think about what are we going to have and that's why we make a lot of starches and prep vegetables for the week and then I'll either make a, a soup, a stew or a chili or cook beans so that we have that and we always freeze some of that so that we always have a supply ready in our freezer of soup, stew, chili, beans, veggie burgers, um, breakfast sausages, just mm. all kinds of things that we can pull from for our meal. Now Tom typically has his chopped salad in the evening and I like to have mine at noon and so in the evening is when I'll pick something either from the freezer or from the fridge and just combine it and you know combine starches, vegetables and um, legumes and make a meal and he'll have his chopped salad and he usually makes it a Mexican chopped salad with beans and rice and corn and salsa and he makes um, some oil-free chips to go with it so so we really don't have to meal plan because we eat very simply most of the time so I only make something a little more complicated when we're going to have company or if I'm taking something like to our daughter's house for her and her family to eat so, so on the feed here yes it seems that some a couple of folks have been have received their bowls. So Corey must be going and getting oh, some stuff out the door that's awesome. already on hand. Well, you had wondered about that. If the, yeah, because David and Corey are the father and son team that owns Hull and Bowl Mill, and so the governor, you know, you know, deemed that as a non-essential business. But the family members probably could go in and get stuff ready for the UPS truck. So 
So well, I saw on Facebook that somebody left me a message and said my bowl's supposed to arrive today, and I thought, and I thought then, well, how can that be? And I wondered if Corey was going in. So that's awesome. So yeah. they're keeping some things going. Okay. Um, Main uh, Street uh, United Methodist Church says hi, Tammy and Tom. Tom and I grew up in the Methodist Church. That's so fun. So where are you at? Where's the Main Street United Methodist Church? It's on Main Street, I think. <laughs> but in what community? I want to know. Uh, the one in Roseville is on Church Street. Yeah, actually. so it's, it is on Church Street. Okay. Um, That's fun. And the one in, in Auburn is on Main Street, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So if you're just joining us, just know we are doing tonight instead of tomorrow. This is an advanced makeup live <laughs> session for Nutmeg Notebook yeah, we, we Sunday won't be, afternoons. We won't be on tomorrow. Tomorrow we've got to batch cook because uh, we spent this whole week, this weekend so far, um, videotaping new There's no food recipes. for next week. There's no food made for next week yet. Okay. Um, Eileen is commenting that she has bought both the gravy and the cheese sauce from Well Your World and not enjoying them as much as she has enjoyed the bottled sauces and wondered if we have recipes or suggestions. We also just bought the mushroom gravy and the cheese sauce. They're still in the bag. We're looking forward to trying them. Mm -hmm. have not had time to crack the bags open yet. They uh, just came a couple days ago. Yeah, so we are going to be, um, you know, probably uh, mixing up the gravy and putting it on some potatoes that we've got already batch cooked in the refrigerator. Um, hey, we could have that tonight for dinner. You oh, you're going to have had, your you salad. You said I had a salad left to eat from last week. <laughs> you do. You do have a salad. Yeah, we eat. make the 12 salads, which, you know, a salad at least, you know, six out of seven days. And then if I skip more than one day for some alternative meal, then it creates an imbalance in the, mm -hmm. in the flow of materials in and out of the refrigerator. So anyway, okay. Uh, so no, we don't have any um, ideas of what to do with his gravy and his cheese sauce yet because we... we haven't tried them, but we'll but try we them were, and we'll we let you know. We were going to probably want to uh, tape whatever we do with those. So anyway. Yeah, we should. Yeah. We should. Yeah, we will. So, okay. But, you know, gravy can go on all kinds of things. So uh, any kind of potato or rice or mm -hmm. um, anything. You could yeah. probably make like a broccoli uh, rice casserole, either mm -hmm. using the gravy or the cheese mix. I'm just excited to have them because we can't always get all the ingredients that we want to get right now with the pandemic. And so I'm just excited to have some things in stock where I don't have to worry about ingredients, you know, to make certain things, yeah. so. Uh, Foodie Julie is asking can, to be reminded what brand of tortillas you like and where you get them. So there's more than one type okay. of tortilla. So I think I can reach those right from here. I don't even have to get out of your chair. <laughs> I'm gonna see what else is on this list. Okay, you want to hold these up? Okay, my tortillas are the, the thicker ones. Uh, Mi Rancho, uh, these are from Costco. Uh, these are made in California. And I like them because of the thickness. They're really pretty heavy body and they will hold up a good serving of, of rice and beans and, and lettuce and Tammy's new cheese sauce I put on there too. And I shove as much of that in my mouth as I can at once. <laughs> And so I like these. Do you still have cheese sauce left? Yes. That's All right. Mine. Is that yours? That in is there? mine. I still but have. But I will too. share. Oh, I have mango salsa too. Okay. okay. All right. Maybe we won't have Dylan's okay. gravy tonight because so, we've got a lot of Mexican so stuff. So I'm here. easy. I just have. I'm. I'm just this one, and this serves all of my tortilla needs. But Tammy, on the other hand, <laughs> is more. Are you throwing me under the bus? No, I, I'm holding up your, your tortilla artistry. She has to have more than one kind of tortilla. Oh, listen to you. Okay, so this is the same brand. It's the Mi Rancho, M-I-R-A-N-C-H-O. They're, they're thinner and, and these are organic. And yes, and these are much thinner. So I get three of these are 110 calories and I don't count calories but just to let you know the difference because these these are really thick and these are like these are 70 calories just for one so these are really thick. those are necessary calories for me and these make much better chips than those mine and make so, much better chips <laughs> no these are crispier his are more like hard these are crispier and these I find at Safeway but somebody told me, I think Linda Fletcher told me that you can get these at Nugget and Rayleigh's also 
here in California. I don't know where you can get them where you live, but here's what you should do. Look their company up online. Most companies have a product search. So you can put your zip code in. Find out who sells them. And find out who sells them in your area or if anyone does. Then they also come in these cute little taco sliders, which I just love. And these are great to put in the air fryer and make a crispy tostada out of. Or I also use these and cut them in thin strips and air fry them to go on top of my taco salads. So these are really fun. I buy these at Whole Foods, but they also sell these at Safeway. I've seen them at Safeway. Then I just bought these and I haven't had a chance to try them yet, but these are La Tortilla Factory organic yellow corn tortillas. And I found these at Target of all places. And these are just water, stone ground yellow corn, masa flour, and gargum. So, and they're organic. So I'm anxious to try these out. And I, the only reason I bought these is I wanted to be able to tell you guys who don't have a Whole Foods or can't find the Mi Rancho ones. I wanted to let you know, hey, there are some organic ones. And it seems like Target is everywhere. I think every state in the United States has a Target. So these came from Target. Okay. You want to put those back in there, or we're, we're we'll going to be getting them into there. them out pretty soon. Yeah, as they'll we're be done, fine. I'll be, I'll be making my chips as soon yeah. as we're so done. So, those here. are what we have found. And also, um, there's a couple more brands in the refrigeration section at Whole Foods. And I believe that the ones at Trader Joe's, the regular corn ones at Trader mm -hmm. Joe's, they're not organic, but they don't have any oil in them. And I'm pretty sure they're gluten free. I left those guys up a little too high. I'm going to go lower them down a little bit. Who? Everybody on <laughs> all, of you, all of you folks. You're up just a little bit too high. I, I need to. Oh, you think, are you going yeah, like this, looking yeah. up? Okay. Well, we don't need that. If anybody's watching us on their big screen, then they're looking right up our nose, probably. There we go. This would be a little friendlier, maybe. So, um, Diane says that she ordered four bowls and two of the knives plus the salad spoon and fork and they arrived yesterday and they're really pretty. Oh, that's so exciting. Isn't it? It's so much fun to get a package like that. And Janet says she re received her first order from California Balsamic and the special deal on the sample size is awesome. And what she's talking about is when you order from California Balsamic right now with a minimum of four bottles, for um, you get a little trial size bottle, one for each of the bottles that you've ordered when you have a minimum of four bottles. And you even get to say what flavors you want to try. So that's a great way, get, get a flavor you haven't tried yet. And that's a great way to try out a lot of different flavors. And the vinegars are fantastic. And we just love uh, Thomas and his wife and the products that they put out. So. And normally, if you're, if you're not going to order four or more, you can put our name in, Nutmeg Notebook, and then you can get two free sample size bottles, and you can still dictate what um, flavor you want of those. So lots of people are talking about the lentil loaf. I'm so glad that you liked it, or if you haven't tried it, that you're going to be trying it this week. So I just finished up the last piece of ours. I think it was yesterday. It was so good. Are you, are you, okay. We both can't research those at the same time. Okay. I was over here. I'm sorry. Okay, that's I was, okay. I was catching so up. I want you to talk about, so we got a question about microwaves and um, someone was saying that they really like us but they feel like we're being very irresponsible by recommending that people use the microwave oven to heat up their food. And so we wanted to address that. Yeah, we, we use our microwave. We're not like microwave advocates, but we do use it regularly. Yeah, and so and when people ask us, well, how do you heat your leftovers up or your batch prepped food up, you know, we're honest and we tell people we use our microwave, we yeah. use our air fryer. Yeah, and that and commenter use, was very, uh, they're very, very, very complimentary about, you know, 95% of the work that we do. But they were just asking why, why do we not have an issue with the microwave, yes. I think. So, um, 
I did a little bit of, I did actually quite a bit of just, because you know, it's never been a concern of mine because some number of years ago, you know, this was a big discussion a few decades ago. But I looked for more recent information to see what was there and settled on um, a discussion with one of the most renowned uh, global nuclear physicists who, like, is, is the scientist of all scientists. And he explained the function of microwaves, uh, you know, what's happening is very basic science. Uh, you know, microwaves activate the water mo molecule, which has uh, a charge on one end, and the microwaves, every time the wave goes past the water molecule, it flips it. And so it's flipping it back and forth. Each time a little microwave goes through there, and since they're microwaves, there's a lot of them, and it's flipping it very fast. And it's literally, in the flipping of all those water molecules, it's making friction, and the water is heating up that's in whatever, you know, whether it's a cup of water or water in some food product. So there's no, you know, there's nothing nuclear going on. There's, there's nothing in terms of radiation um, that you see the radiation symbol going on. Um, I will agree that back when I, we used to eat animal products and you put something like bacon in there and you left it in too long, some very strange, I would swear, uh, uh, chemical things were going on with the overcooked grease and oils, but we're not ever microwaving grease or oils in our microwave. We're always just microwaving water. So we don't feel like we are getting into um, the twilight zone again on fundamental changes in the food. Um, other kind of surprising from my research, even from uh, Dr. Greger, was that the discussion about nutrients being, uh, microbes being detrimental to nutrients, that seems to not be the case. The more quickly you heat your food up with the less dilution like from water, like a pot of water, the more nutrients it holds. So by and large, you're retaining more nutrients using the microwave than if you don't uh, across a spectrum of foods that you might heat up in there. And um, there was, you know, uh, it was debunked on, is it Snopes? Is the, mm -hmm. There was a discussion on the internet about water that was microwaved. If you feed it to plants, the plants die. That is completely a false internet fake news thing. It's a hoax. And, and so, but a lot of people heard that and were convinced that that was, you know, that something terrible was happening with the water. But simply put, microwaves are just flipping the, the you know, two H2O, two hydrogens and an oxygen molecule, flipping them back and forth, and they're, you know, rubbing against each other and making heat, and that heats up the product. So I personally am not concerned about uh, deleterious effects from using the microwave. It's everyone's choice not to, and we would not, and we have friends uh, here in our town that we live in that refuse to use microwaves, and and we don't make an issue with them about that. We enjoy the convenience. If they don't want to use one, well, then that's certainly their their choice and their privilege to to heat their food up any way they want. Um, you know, one one thing that a lot of the plant based scientists will talk about is. The best way to prepare your, your vegetables is however it will cause you to eat them. So if that's boiled in a pot or zapped in a microwave, then then that's the best thing to do is to get them in your mouth, whichever way is going to well, make it happen. Do you remember this question came up when we were on the vegan cruise in February when they had the panel up there, Dr. Greger, and um, who else was up there? Dr. Well, well, Campbell. And... One of the senior doctors d didn't know that that was the water. No, but I'm, but I'm saying, but Dr. Greger said, hey, Help. I've got oh. a video on that. And he was like, and it's perfectly safe to use your microwaves yeah. to heat up your plant-based foods. Yeah. So. So, so we're not going to advocate against that, but we're not going to... You know, it's find a fault with anybody choice. that doesn't want to use no, it. No, no, it's personal, so, personal, absolutely personal choice. Yeah. So, so, but that's just one of the ways that we use it. Okay, so I'm going to let's check. Is there, so, is there any more questions on that? Okay, uh, somebody was asking the name of the tortillas from Target again. It's La Tortilla, L A T O R T I L L A, La Tortilla Factory. At, at least these are available at the Northern California Targets. And it could be because this the company is out of Santa Rosa, California. I know sometimes 
things, products that are available at chain stores, sometimes it's regional. So, but you could look online too and see if you can order them. Okay. So did you want to talk about rice next? Yeah, let's talk about rice. So this is Tom, the science guy, because he likes to research things. And so, so we want to talk about um, brown rice because we did get a concern from someone uh, who left a message, I think it was on a YouTube yeah. video, well, there, about why we still eat brown well, rice. There we was something in a, in a recent book published by Dr. Furman that raised that question again. And I went back and we, the stuff that we found of his was a few years old. Mm -hmm. um, there, there is a discussion that, you know, I'll, several of them, I've heard more than one of the plant-based doctors uh, talk about it. There are parts of the country that used to be planted a century ago or more or a couple of centuries ago with cotton and there was something called the boa weevil that was um, you know eating all the cotton and before we knew what we were doing we dumped a bunch of arsenic on the cotton fields uh, cotton is no longer grown on those fields anymore but there is residual arsenic and that arsenic does uh, you know trace amounts of it wind up in the rice grown in those regions uh, generally speaking, those regions are in the south and in the southeast. And, uh, and actually, the site that you were reading this morning, was that Dr. Greger's? No, it was Dr. Furman. Dr. Furman was talking about, yeah. Mm -hmm. That it even gets down to the type of rice, whether it's a basmati or a long grain or a wild. Um, so there's a lot of information there. If you want to research, research that, you can do, you know, uh, Google Dr. Furman rice. Um, but we've known for some time the rice that we buy predominantly is a short grain brown rice grown in Northern California by Lundberg Farms. Um, the founder of Lundberg Farms it started, came, immigrated here from Nebraska. Interestingly enough. Yeah, and, and shortly after the Dust Bowl and was concerned about care of the land. Um, and everything in Nebraska in the 30s was blowing away. Uh, in the wind, so he came out here and 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 took care to treat the ground well, and so as a result of that, now a couple of generations later, we have a rice supply in that short grain California brown rice that has that is far below uh, any governmental standard of of trace amounts of arsenic. Yeah, so there's different levels, like for adults, daily consumption, and for babies. And the Lundberg organic brown rice, it comes when they test it, it tests below the level that it has been designated as safe for babies. So when we cook brown rice, Tom actually does the cooking of the brown rice. Um, one of the things that you can do is first, you know, look for organic, look for some that's not grown in the South. And so you know, organic and California grown is good. There's some rice that's grown up in the in the upper Midwest too. I remember that are okay. In Wisconsin, Minnesota, mm -hmm. and so they weren't in from that previous cotton area. Yeah, it's so. more in the southern states. Yeah. Rice that's grown in the southern states, and then rinsing it really well. And so you triple rinse it. You rinse it like three times until mm -hmm. the water is running. Starts clear. to come out a little bit clear. Yeah. Yeah, and you'll show maybe when you do your rice video. Maybe you'll show them your technique for the rinsing. rinsing. Yeah, because, because I show that, that. actually because that plays into how much yeah, how, how much water you put in there. Because mm -hmm. if you rinse your rice, then you can't. It's got some water in it, so mm -hmm. then your your ratio becomes an issue unless you modify yeah. how you do that. So so we feel yeah. after you know doing our research on it when all the information was first coming out about arsenic and rice and Tom eats a lot of rice. I I eat a little bit of rice. But um, we felt good mm -hmm. after doing our research about it, about the type that we buy and, and how we prepare it. Yeah. So. Let's see. I wanted to back up to you on the microwave thing because uh, I saw this go by in the scroll. We, we never heat anything up in plastic in the microwave. Uh, you know, as the food gets hot and it's heating up the plastic, then um, you don't know what's getting released from that plastic. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we only use our our um, plastic containers for frozen storage and refrigerator storage, but never never hot food. So, uh, yeah, we use glass containers generally to mm -hmm. heat things up in the mm -hmm. microwave as yeah. well. 
Fruly Julie, um, we've been uh, watching for that impersonator thing, uh, but f for those of you watching the feed, uh, there was uh, some, some troll made a fake Nutmeg Notebook account, even stole Tammy's picture on it, but the address of it, when you, when you click on it, wasn't ours, obviously. Uh, but they were blocked. They've been blocked here and there, and there was a fake AJ poster as well. Um, so whenever we see that show up, we make sure it's the real one. Um, so they got reported, and they got blocked, and we haven't seen anything new come up. Um, but, you know, there was one video that they were posting that was, um, that was, that was inappropriate, and we, uh, in detail, reported that one to uh, YouTube um, uh, you know, as a harassment video. So, uh, yeah, the last time I checked, no new trouble that we're aware of. If you do see something, please email Tom at nutmegnotebook.com or Tammy at nutmegnotebook.com with a screenshot. And take a, I was going to say, and take a screenshot yeah. of it so that we can report that to YouTube. But yeah. YouTube's response was that it might take them a while to, you know, we got a pat answer back. It might take a while yeah. for us to get to this because we're short handed with everyone yeah. working from home right now. Yeah. Uh, Judith, our picture, our because we're looking at a rebroadcast picture back. Our feed is clear, so I think probably you're dealing with an internet um, issue locally. Um, okay, so me, anything else on the rice? You know, there's all different kinds of rice. They, there are they are required to test, and each brand has their test results available on on how much. You know, arsenic is one of those things where it's kind of everywhere in the world. It's just a matter of how much. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I'm not saying, you know, you have to look by the type of rice because it varies quite a bit based on, on the, I mean, most of those types of rice we don't buy or use. Uh, we stick to, to the short grain for the most yeah. part. So it varies on the type of rice and also the region that the rice was grown in. Yeah. And so you can look up the brand that you buy and go to their website and look for information on their website about their testing and how it how the that particular rice is grown. Yeah. Okay. Uh, have we tried red rice? Amber Saul wants to know. A I, Amber, so, so, I don't know how to pronounce it. Have we tried what? Red rice. I have not. Um, just I bought it one time. I found it in the bulk section at Whole Foods, and which of course the bulk section is gone right is now. It's gone right now. <laughs> But, um, and I used it in some type of a Indian recipe and, and it was good. Mm -hmm. It was good. It was organic red rice. Okay. So we did rice. We did the giveaway. We talked about the microwave a little bit. Mm -hmm. People are saying thank you for the rice research and yeah. somebody loves red rice. Yeah. I just don't want to get too deep into the, to the woods on that. You have to look at what rice you're you know, what specific grain and type of rice and then get on the computer and, and do a search with that manufacturer on that rice to get the information specific to what you're using. Yeah, but, because it's different depending on long or short yeah. uh, grain. Yeah. And, and you know what, it's a valid concern. We were concerned when we first started, when we went to Whole Food Plant Base mm -hmm. and my rice consumption was, was ramping up from whatever I used to eat. And we actually met, um, Lundberg being a Northern California company, we actually got to talk to one of the folks from Lundberg Farms at, uh, at this giant um, farmer's, market. farmer's market in, in, in downtown Sacramento. And we had a, you know, a pretty good conversation with her about that issue. Hey, she wasn't from Lundberg. Where was she from? She, it was a different organic rice. But she, but we told her that we usually buy Lundberg, and she was complimentary. And she about was it. complimentary. She's like, they're a very that's good safe. company, yeah, and that's safe, okay. and so are we, kind well, of. Thing. I talked to the rice lady. <laughs> <laughs> he did talk to a rice lady, and then there's some that's grown organic up in Chico too. Remember, we yeah. bought rice from mm -hmm. from them at the um, Veg Fest. Yeah, and Elizabeth, it. Oh, it is Saturday. It's Saturday. <laughs> Somebody say, oh my gosh, is this Sunday? Oh, there's something going on here about, uh, it's 10.45 a.m. and Sunday where Angela is. Um, oh, that's funny. So, um, another part okay, of the Okay, so it's Sunday. Where Angela, where are you? Where do you live that it's already Sunday? So Amber made the Chipotle bean burgers and thought they were yummy. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and I don't know if it's on the scroll. Several people have made the... The lentil loaf. Yeah, and so yeah, that's, that's great. Yeah, we've had a, we've been posting yeah. a lot of new recipes, you guys. I finally 
I don't know, we've just I finally had time to pull together and um, do like final testing on some recipes. So it's But exciting. we've been putting some of those in the front of previous lives. And so like last week's live show was crazy. Um, was there a recipe in the beginning of that? I don't remember what we, no, yeah. no, no, last week we did, it was Easter. And so we just did a chat. We did a two hour Q and A, I yeah, think. Two weeks ago we did a recipe then followed by another hour of discussion. So you can always just watch, if there's a recipe on a live, you watch the first mm -hmm. 20 minutes, get the recipe, and then you can decide to hang around while you're cooking or not. But you, <laughs> you don't have to wait two hours to get a recipe. If we are doing a recipe, we're gonna put it in the front. Yes, we um, always do that. Um, and a bunch of people tried the sausages. Well, because you did the sausages on something. People saw the sausage for the, our Easter breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. Because those, they, those have gone quiet and, for a while. Now yeah. they've been a lot the, of... And put the recipe out. The, the breakfast sausages are really good. Yeah. So, and that's a great thing. That's, you know, that's a grab and go kind of breakfast too, because it'll hold together. And when I have those and our son comes over, he will... Yeah pull those out and just eat them as a snack okay because those are really good all right so the person who said things were blurry it got on blurry she went in and changed to a higher quality all right so, so what that's else? good okay any questions that that was pretty much all that i had for today yeah we expected we'd be on for 30 minutes or so so we're, we're actually yeah. past so that. i saw something i liked on facebook that i wrote down and so um we love the um, brian and jessica from crocs in the kitchen and we know a lot of you follow them as well and if you don't follow them you should follow them because they're a younger version of tom and tammy but they recently um, interviewed Ray Cronice, if I'm saying his name right. And we haven't had a chance to watch those interviews yet. But there's a quote from Ray that in regards to how to get family on board, which a lot of people send us that same question. They're like, and usually it's the woman, the wife, trying to get the husband to adopt a whole food plant-based diet and they're like you know how can i get him to do this with me well you can't and i like this quote so ray cronis says be a light house not a tugboat isn't that cute okay be the lighthouse be a lighthouse not a tugboat so you can't go out and drag them in and try to get them to adopt a whole food plant-based lifestyle but all you can do is be a good example and be the light and maybe they'll be drawn to it. I like that. I thought yeah. that was, I, I just, that really. That's a good analogy. Isn't it? I yeah. thought so too. And then of course it made me think of all the neat lighthouses that mm. we've seen over on the California mm. coast. No. Um, yeah, that is, that's nice. And that's kind of what. What I did. Yeah. It's With just you. To be an example and to not push too hard, but mm -hmm. make the information easily available. Mm -hmm. um, Jamie is commenting that, or ask actually that, uh, do we have any food allergies? She knows that Chef, Chef AJ doesn't eat beans, as I recall. She stays away from legumes as a rule. Yeah, well she has a, she's not allergic to them, but she has a sensitivity to legumes and okay. soy. So, so yeah. I, I have um, a sensitivity to gluten. So I do not have celiac disease. I do have one of the genes for celiac and I just have a sensitivity to gluten and so I do avoid gluten and, um, and then we have a family member who is allergic to cashews, pistachios and hazelnuts and so I no longer use any of those in my cooking because I don't want to ever accidentally feed that person something that they should not have. So, um, but other than that, you don't have any food allergies, I do you? Eat, I eat everything. He oh. eats everything. He does eat everything. Okay. So, uh, Donna is asking, which La Tortilla factory tortilla are we using? It simply says yellow corn tortilla. 
So organic and, and yellow corn tortilla. And I haven't tasted tortilla. these yet. I want to tell you, I have not even tasted these yet. I just, yeah. I had to go to Target this week um, to and get... It's another possible resource for one that's not full of oil and yes. so, sodium. And yeah, I had to go to Target and I just happened to see these at Target. And so I bought them because, you know, we get a lot of questions from people asking where to buy things. And one thing that people always complain about is that they can't find organic corn tortillas that don't have any oil in them or don't have added salt. And so these, these just have water, stone ground, organic yellow corn masa flour, and organic gar gum, which, you know, that's just to make them uh, stay together better, and lime juice. So that's it on these La Tortilla ones. But I haven't tasted them yet. I could open it up and just taste one. Okay, Fooly Julie's asking, how does your hair <laughs> look so nice when we are physically distancing and can't get haircuts? We have not had haircuts. We have not had haircuts, but tomorrow, Tom and our son, our son's coming over. And we have the oh, clippers. Oh, these are good. And so we're gonna watch YouTube video. We talked about this last <laughs> week. Uh, we're both, we both have an assignment to watch YouTube videos. And so we're going to exchange uh, neck trims and over the ear. I don't know that we're Probably gonna- Probably won't do the top. I don't think we're gonna do that. Your hair is longer by an inch, at least th th from usual. Yeah, my last hair, these are good, you guys. I just tasted them. They taste really good. Okay. So I think these are a winner. All right. Um, I was thinking about making no. a tortilla casserole. No. So really, Fooly, Julie, um, is so, it, it, it's Fooly. It's not, I thought it was Foodie at first, but it's Fooly, Julie. That's right. <laughs> oh, it is. Okay. I um, just want to so, make sure I wasn't being rude. My hair is driving me crazy. My last haircut was February 14th before we went on the cruise. And they shut down... Um, non-essential businesses here the day before my haircut, my last scheduled haircut. So I didn't get to go. Um, I did trim the front. Oh, I wonder if if my hairdresser is watching. Um, because this was just driving me crazy because it was just like a little bit, it wasn't quite perfect mm -hmm. right here. And so I was really looking forward to getting my haircut last month. Um, to get that fixed, and so I did take scissors to it. You did okay. I did okay. It look, doesn't look bad, does it? No, it, it, I did okay. Yeah, it's hanging closer up on top because of the weight. Uh huh. It's kind of it is. Flatter up it's here. flat. Yeah. Hey, mine's. I don't know. Mine's starting to. I'm getting the whole. I'm gonna go total Einstein on you guys. I'm just gonna do the. <laughs> <laughs> it still looks good. You're still looking good. So, because you had it, you had a very short haircut the last time you got it cut. Yeah. And so it's still looking good, but you know. Yeah, we were flipping, uh, we were flipping TV channels the other uh, last night, and one of the major newscasters on one of the major networks was doing a self uh, buzz with the buzzer and slipped and was bald all down the side of his head up high. It was so funny. So, anyway, okay. Uh, Elizabeth, I'm, I'm not sure if you've got a typo here. How do you BVB do that? So I don't know um, if that was supposed to be a different word. So. Um, I don't know. SB says that their hair is short and they cut their own hair and neck trim with clippers. So easy to do, been doing it for five years. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm not great. I didn't act, you know, I just did a little trim on like about this much at the front. I would never try cutting the rest of it because I have super thick hair and it would probably be a complete disaster. So um, I did talk to my hairstylist who she's been doing my hair for like 25 years. I didn't talk. We texted the other day and she said they've been told that they may get to go back to work on May 15th, but I'm just, you know, really not sure how that's going to work. So she said, you know, they'll have to have space in between, more space in between clients. One client will come at a time. They'll have to disinfect everything in between clients. So
So, I mean, I'm assuming she'd have to wear a mask, I'd have to wear a mask. So I'm just not sure that I'm even comfortable with that. As, you know, as bad as I want my hair cut, I want to be safe and I want her to be safe. So well, I've been wanting you to grow your hair out. I know, but I don't want long hair again. It's so hot and it's so much work. I'll turn up the air conditioning. Then. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about men that they love long hair on women? What is that? What is that? I, I think this is a really cute style. I love, I love having a bob. Yeah, it's clean and simple and classy. It's a good cut. Yeah, it's a it's it's good. And if I didn't, if my hairstylist didn't do such a, a precise cut, it would not look good as it grows out. But it's because she is a perfectionist. She's yeah. a bit of a perfectionist. She does a really great job, and um, that's why yeah. it's still looking okay. Okay, Randy just showed up. She says she likes your hair. Oh, thank you. So, yeah. I like it too. And you know what? I've never had to color my hair. Um, I'm getting a lot of gray, but I have never ever colored my hair or highlighted my hair. And I know my friends who get highlights or color their hair are starting to feel a little bit desperate right now. Boy, there was because... a thing up further, further in the chat. One of the local news stations, um, Nancy commented that, that their roots are all growing out. So now they're making a uh, they're posting pictures of their roots and turning it into a, a contest. A, yeah, having some fun with it. it oh, sounds that's like. good. That's good. Yeah. So, yeah. so I don't have that to deal with, which is good. Mm -hmm. And and it is growing. It's growing out okay. I mean, if I go another month, I go another month, and maybe I'll just pick a new style. Then I don't know. We'll see. So okay, are we caught up now? Yeah. So Terry says that she made the lentil loaf and even her husband who does not eat plant-based like it. So that is so great. I'm so excited. That, that's just a fun recipe. Yeah, Nanette, her husband wants her to have long hair too. Thank you, Nanette. She says I look great. <laughs> Fran, you're making me laugh. My friend's mother said that men like to see long hair spread out over a pillow. <laughs> It's an art thing. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, you're turning gray at 49. Well, I started um, getting gray hair like when I was 50, but just because I already had so many different colors going on, you know, I have auburn colored hair, but some of it's dark brown and some, you know, and so I think it just blends in and um, it just doesn't show. Do we know Barbara O'Neill? I don't think we know Barbara O'Neill. If you're asking Tom and Tammy. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm not sure. I don't know, that doesn't ring a bell. Hmm, I don't know. So yes, he yes, Heather, her color is natural. <laughs> it is. I can testify to that. It was uh, a brighter red when I was 40 younger. years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. It, so it's just all the gray that's mixed in right now. And some of it is just like silvery white. Yeah. Some of the strands, but oh, at least I don't have You've to You've got color hair. It. I'm, just, I, I'm glad to have hair. I don't care what... I know. Me too, right? Yeah. I'm just happy to have hair. Yeah, because yeah. you've, you've kept your my, hair. My, yeah, my brothers don't have as much hair as I do, so yeah. I'm not feeling too bad here. No, so you're very yeah. lucky. No, okay. I'm glad too. I don't All know. Right. You probably look good bald too. Sure. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hey, so we bought our first water, watermelon of the season. Uh, we were at Costco and we were able to get a watermelon. I was just like, oh, I've got to have a watermelon. So, and I did, I cut it up. I cut half of it that same day and I only and you said had, it's just, it's okay. It's but, okay, but not great. But it, I think I'm going to have it today. I'm going to have some tonight. Okay. Remind me that we're going to have watermelon for dessert. All right. That would be good. That'll be so, good. So, yeah. So we ended up having to go to three grocery stores this week in order to get everything um, because Costco did not have romaine lettuce. And, at all. At all. And they had no bananas out on the floor. But when Tom asked someone, he went in the back and got us some bananas. Some bananas had come in and they just hadn't been put out on the floor yet. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was good, and we didn't have to stand in line to get into Costco this week, and yeah. we got there about 8 o'clock, 
and you know the first mm. hour is for senior citizens. Oh, we had we ran into our first problem with uh, at Whole Foods. We haven't been able to get shredded carrots there for three a four, month a month now. Nothing in the world. You can always shred your own carrots, but they're a little bit too wet coming out of the food processor than we want in our prepared salads. Mm -hmm. And we got to the Japanese sweet potato pile, which was non-existent. There were like five, and we bought them all. So, so after we left, there were no Japanese sweet potatoes left at Whole Foods. <laughs> so now we're hoarders, I guess. <laughs> We hoarded well, no, them all. Okay, but some of them were like just this big. The size of a little tiny Yukon Gold. It was ridiculous. I'm like, that is not going to so, suffice so for a meal. So what is going on with the... Ge ge there's never been... There's always been a generous pile of those right next yes. to the Hannah's. You know, I don't know what's happening. There was a lot of Stokes, but I don't like the Stokes. And we already had Hannah's. Yeah. So we didn't need any of those. So yeah, we did buy so all of the JSPs. So that was a, a new glitch there. And then we went... And finished up what we couldn't find. So it. then we went, we were going to go to Trader Joe's. So we got to Trader Joe's and oh my gosh, the line came out of this, you know, they were lined up in front of the store and it went all the way down the strip mall, down the side of the strip mall. And around back behind. And around back behind That's the, the strip it, mall. It was like a Costco scale line at Trader Joe's. Yeah, it was crazy. And that was like it. I don't know, yeah. eight thirty, quarter so till nine. So we bailed on that and went to uh, Smart and Final. Smart and Final, and found a couple of cans of something. And well, we found frozen corn, not organic, but better to eat it than non to eat conventionally grown than to not eat it. Did. And then we also found shredded carrots, also not organic, but better to eat it conventionally yeah. grown than not to but eat then, it. But then, but then the guy there in front of us paid in cash, and I think he he worked a food truck because he had a bazillion he was buying all corn dogs, dogs. Uh, and so he was a cash business so he was playing all this cash and so then the lady checked us out so we came home and we got the Clorox wipes out and we wiped down all of the stuff and we were wearing our gloves because you know the checkers are all touching the food that's coming across but I don't know just introducing that all of that miscellaneous dirty cash back into the equation right before our food went across the belt was disconcerting. So it's making this, you know, I'm sure that there's a good deal of paranoia uh, for me in that, but, but still it's a real issue. Yes, it is. So um, Linda Fletcher just came on and said, this is a surprise. Happy to see you. Happy to see you too. We're glad you're here, Linda. We're glad everybody's here. But we are almost done. Uh, mm -hmm. But you can go back and watch the replay. So Krista yeah. says the Japanese sweet potatoes have been golf ball sized. They have. Yeah. And some of them that we bought, I don't even think were as big as a golf ball. Um, they were so little. We bought, I, she, was, she put two back because they were broke. They were had a part broke off, but it had dried off. So it was a clean break that had healed over. So I said, there's nothing wrong with those. And so we went ahead and put those in the bag too. So, because Goose Joe says the store there has permanently discontinued them. That would be bad. Oh, where do you live, Goose Joe? So... That's sad. Yeah, scan and go at Sam's Club. We love that. We use that constantly mm -hmm. where you just use your phone and you scan your own stuff and, and use a little code uh, and go out the door. And nobody's touching your stuff but you. We, and we do use self-check at Costco and self-check at, at Safeway if we find ourselves there. Mm -hmm. And Whole Foods does not have a self-check. Um, no. So. But I feel like... I feel like they're doing a really good job at Whole Foods, though. You know, they are um, sanitizing the carts for you. Yeah. And they have um, markings on the floor so that everybody stays six feet apart. And they don't let you bring in your own bags. And so they're um, giving you the bags and paper bags and... Mm -hmm. bagging everything for you and so I just feel like they're doing a, a really yeah. a good job and so is Trader Joe's I feel like Trader Joe's is doing a really good job too I mean I've even seen a clerk while we're in Trader Joe's shopping going around with the um, the like Clorox wipes and wiping things down you know yeah. the shelves and stuff and so I just feel like just you an know, impossible surface yeah Okay. So I think that that's good. Question from Sylvia. Have we had any issues with the Breville Smart Oven Air not working? At 
Uh, we've had ours for how many years now? I mean, the, the total. How, when did we buy it? Three or four. Three and a half years ago, maybe? Yeah, in May. We yeah. bought it in May. And the first okay. unit that, that we bought had a problem with the door hinge. The door would open, but it didn't want to shut. At about 22 months of ownership, we'd had it for, mm -hmm. for just sh two months short of two years. And I did call the factory because it's like, this is kind of a weird thing. Uh, the door like catches and it doesn't want to shut. Yeah, otherwise it was working, but, but then when it did shut, it didn't quite go flush. And so I told the guy, I says, I think there's some kind of a issue here that's maybe not just a broken part. I think something else is going on. And he said, he said, you know, give me your name and address and serial number. And, and they shipped me a new unit and they put a $150 deposit on my credit card. And then we took that same box and returned the original unit and got a brand new unit. And so they, they took care of it right away. I was within my two year warranty. So if you're having an issue, um, go scroll down to the bottom of their website, look for customer support. I don't remember exactly. Call them. Find that phone number and call them. They have a whole, uh, well, typically they have a whole bank of agents there to take care of customer service. Their, their customer service is pretty good. He was um, straightforward and communicative and, and just took care of business. If you're outside the two-year warranty, I don't know uh, what kind of program they have. Uh, I'm certain they would allow you to send it back for a repair of some sort. Um, but, you know, some kind of systemic issue with the door. They were kind of cleaning up in the marketplace. So I reach out to them if you would. Um, that's what I know about issues with the mic. Otherwise, it's, it's been flawless. It works it great. It has. We love it. Yeah. And we use it every day. So either, you know, we use it for baking or Tom likes to make a vegan pizza. And so he'll use um, the pizza cycle. We use the air fryer. Uh, I did do, I did use it for a little bit of dehydrating to make my dehydrated cookies and some granola. And it worked great for that. And so we use it constantly. I mean, it gets quite a workout here. So Amber, where do you live that you found a local produce company that usually delivers to rest restaurants that has contactless pickup? That might be interesting for anyone um, who maybe lives in the same yeah. area that you live in. That would be great. Yeah. Uh, Pam, yeah, if you're having issues with your door, call them. Um, yeah, call the phone number on the website and get a hold of customer service. Because the door just it didn't want to shut after we opened it. It was catching over on the left some, somehow. So Kimberly says that they don't have a Costco, Whole Foods, or Trader Joe's in Corpus Christi, Texas. But they do have Sam's Club, Sprouts, and Natural Grocers. So we do buy some things at Sam's Club and Sprouts. We don't have a Natural Grocers, though. And I've noticed that Sam's Club is carrying more organic produce than they used to. So that makes me happy. When we were in there the other day, they had quite a few things that were organic. They had organic yams. They had organic apples. Um, what else did we find in there that was organic the other day? I think organic carrots, little the little baby carrots. Mm -hmm. So that was good. Linda uh, got stuck at the Whole Foods One Way Island. So what we were doing is we would need something down the aisle that was the wrong way. So Tammy would go around. I would stay there with the cart and she would go down the other adjacent aisle and come back up to follow the arrow and mm -hmm. grab the can and, and then meet back with me at the cart. So that was an interesting exercise because they, some of them were full of people and it's like, okay, uh, too many to cheat. It sounds like Linda went ahead and went the wrong way. <laughs> I think Linda cheated. She's a rebel. Linda, you're just a rebel. Okay. I don't know. We have found that sometimes at Whole Foods, it's like way busier during the senior hour. And if you go after the senior hour, it's not as busy because it seems like there's more seniors going <laughs> than um, regular folks. And so sometimes if you go like at nine o'clock, it's actually less busy. Are we doing anything extra um, when washing uh, fresh fruit and product? Uh, when we get it back, you know, the bananas yeah. are bagged, apples come in the plastic thing, um, the yeah, romaine just, is bagged, so. Yeah, we're just washing things like, like we normally we did. Yeah, so we've watched um, a few interviews 
on um, CNN where they've interviewed um, the epidemiologists mm -hmm. and they talk about how what they're doing and they're really not doing anything more than any of us are. So they said, you know, as far as like putting bleach in your water or anything like that, it's really not necessary. If it makes you feel better to take your Clorox wipes and to wipe down the packaging, you can do that. Um, but it's, re they said it really comes down to hand washing. So, but I also know, you know, they're still learning things about it. So I say do whatever to clean things to whatever degree, um, makes you feel comfortable about eating it. But I'm just, I'm still washing everything the way I've always washed everything. And yeah, we've been leaving like boxes that come to the front door. Uh, in the garage in the garage or sitting just inside the front door and then we'll tend to them the next day mm -hmm. I think probably more that's a psychology than, than yeah. real science yeah but, just not opening them right away just yeah. letting them sit for 24 hours and yeah you know okay well listen we I've have heard been, that a Vons is a good grocery yeah, store Terry yeah. shops at Vons We've been on for an hour, so we need okay. to. Okay. Yeah, need to we've sign got to off. figure out what we're going to eat for um I for dinner. So I did it. see the whoever was asking about Dylan's gravy and cheese sauce. Someone else posted that they find that they just need to season them really well when they make them. And you know, because he's selling to the general public, he has to keep things kind of just um, what toned do I want to say? Toned, toned down. down. I, so, I wouldn't use. Yeah, you you know. Not bland, just toned down. Yeah, because here's the thing. We, all, we have a varying degree of sensitivities when it comes to our taste buds. And so what seems hot to me might seem mild to somebody yeah. sitting on this side of me. And it might be taste extremely yeah. um, hot to somebody yeah, on this side of me. Yeah, sriracha sauce is very mild in my opinion. And he says, yes, it is mild. He had to make it that way so that it... So it would appeal to a larger group of people. Yeah, I mean, you can always sprinkle jalapeno or something else if you want to spice yeah, it. Yeah, but I really like his sauce because it's not yeah. too hot and I can put it on things. Yeah. So, uh, Mary Jo, thank you for asking uh, about going live tomorrow. We are here today on Saturday because of a scheduling conflict. We can't be on tomorrow. So uh, we've got a bunch of regular batch prepping stuff to do and, and some other family business to tend to. So And a video to finish. And... Yeah, we got to finish that. Shoot. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 no, so, no, we no, we are not issue. able to be on tomorrow. That is why we're here today because we um, didn't want to just, we didn't want to ghost people. So, we're showing up early instead of just not showing up at all. Hope, yeah. Hope that's okay. Or being really late. Oh, Nailed and Polish says that they find Dylan Sriracha spicy. And I think it's mild. Oh, see, mm -hmm. see, yeah. that's what I'm. That's what I'm talking about. And so, if he sees, if he heavily seasoned the cheese um, mix or the gravy mix, then it wouldn't appeal to as many people. So it's probably better to be a little bit too mild than a little bit too hot, because yeah, because a little you'll mild. You leave a lot of people behind if it's too spot. Too yes, hot. because with yeah. mild, we can all spice it up. But if it's too spicy, there isn't a whole lot you can do but dilute, you know, try to dilute it. But, um, and who wants to okay. do that? So, okay. All right. That's everything. Thanks, you guys. You know what? We really appreciate you guys showing up and chatting with us. And it helps us feel not quite so A lonely. little less quarantined, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, um, it just really hit me this week. I, I, worse than, I had a harder time this week than all of the previous weeks of being Well, I told you yesterday, quarantine. I thought I was, I, you know, I was gonna say, there's a vegan restaurant up in a small town up, up in the mountains from us a little ways. Um, it's only about a 25 minute drive. And, that, and I, was, I was gonna turn and say, hey, hey Tammy, let's go, up to, let's go up to Nectar Cafe for dinner. And then I went, oh, we can't do that. They're not open right now. Cause they, they're not even open for takeout. No. So. So yeah, that's it's it's starting to get hard to remember that we're still doing this. We're still doing this. Yeah, I mean, I when I was in Target the other day shopping, I, when I got home, I told Tom I just started crying in the middle of Target, and just because I, you know, shelves were just empty, and I just I don't know, it just hit me, and 
I think because just knowing that we aren't supposed to go anywhere and can't go anywhere makes me want to go someplace. I was talking to my mom about that today, and my mom and I are both kind of homebodies. Like, we really love being in our houses, and, you know, we love puttering in our kitchens and just being a little homebody. But I told her, I said, I think just because I know that we can't go anywhere makes me wish I could go somewhere. And she said, I have the exact same feeling. <laughs> so... Um, so anyway, we really appreciate appreciate you guys showing up and spending some time with us because you know we're missing being social and this really helps. We're missing our plant-based meetup groups here in town. Yeah, so. we're really missing those because we usually get together with people once a week and um, that is that does miss us. Okay. So Elizabeth says she's hungry now. Okay, so let, we're going to sign off and you can food. go eat because that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go find something I'm too. Tom. And I'm Tammy. And we help, we help you, you get, get healthy, healthy and, and stay healthy. I'm rushing. We totally blew that. We have to start over. You have to start it. I'm Tammy. <laughs> and I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and stay healthy one meal at, at a time. time. Bye-bye. Bye, you guys. Be safe. Stay well. We'll see you next week.